Officer, was it just you and your partner, Mr. Haddon? Officer Haddon? Yes. Okay. And what did you do next? We tried to listen for any kind of sounds of domestic violence. We checked the hallways, we didn't observe anyone. We went out to a courtyard, didn't observe anyone. And based on what I was just reminded of, there was a woman in the gym who didn't seem involved, was working out, looked fine, nothing out of the ordinary. And then we responded to a door in the hallway and I knocked and was met by a male. Okay. Up until that point of time, from exiting the elevator to knocking on that door, did you see anything that indicated a crime? I did not. Up until the point where you knocked on that door, um, did you see, see or hear or witness anything indicating that there had been a domestic violence perpetrated? I did not. Up until you knocked on that door, did you see anything uh, with, which you would have considered out of the ordinary? I did not. And I guess what I'm asking is, walking from the elevator to the gym and then to the door that you knocked on, um, what, was that, was that, were you in the hallway? Yes, I was in the hallway. Okay. And during that time period from exiting the elevator through to knocking on the door, um, was there anything in the hallway that uh, was unusual to you? Not that I observed, no. Did you see any uh, stains on the floor? Not that I recall. Did you see any uh, vandalism in that area? No, I did not. Did you see um, any broken glass in that area? I did not. Okay. And upon knocking on the door, what happened next? A male opened the door. I don't remember the exact questions and conversation we had, but I remember asking if they called for help and he said that it was the neighbor and that she was inside of his house apartment with his girlfriend. And I asked him if they could step out and he told me to wait and he shut the door. And we waited, uh, we waited for them to exit. I don't remember how much time passed by and they came out and that's when we were met with his girlfriend and who I know now as Miss Heard uh, in the hallway. And up until that point in time, did you hear anything that led you to believe uh, that a crime had been committed? I did not. Up until that point in time, did you see anything that made you believe that a crime had been committed? I did not. Up until, up until that point in time, did you hear anything that made you believe that there had been an act of domestic violence there? I did not. Up until that point in time, did you see anything that made you believe that there had been an act of domestic violence there? I did not. Okay. So you indicated that um, after you knocked on the door, uh, you spoke with, and you spoke with a gentleman, is that correct? Correct. And you previously testified to uh, someone as a generic white male. Is that the same person? Yes. So your previous testimony and when you were referring to a generic white male, that's the person who, who opened the door when you first knocked on it, correct? Yes, there was only one male at the location besides my partner. And there was only one male? Is that for the entire time you're at the location? Yes. So in the hall, uh, you met with a generic white male Ms. Heard and the generic white male girlfriend, is that right? Yes. And it was just those three folks? Correct. And you were there with uh, your partner, Officer Haddon? Correct. Okay. And how, in the hallway, how far were you standing from Ms. Heard? 
uh, it was closed probably like two to five feet. And, and at that time, did you notice any injuries on this herd? I did not. Okay. Uh, were you looking to see if she had any injuries at that time? Yes, I was. And um, so you were looking to see if Ms. Heard had any injuries and you determined that she did not. Is that accurate? Correct. Okay. And was the lighting good enough in the hallway for you to make that determination? Yes, the hallways was well lit. Okay. And at the time, were you wearing any sort of corrected lenses? I was not. Uh, Although you are not wearing corrective lenses, were you prescribed corrective lenses at the time? No, I have never worn glasses and I'm not prescribed. I have good vision. Okay. And at that time, uh, did you have good vision? Yes, I did. At the time you were uh, observing Ms. Heard, uh, did you have good vision? Yes, I did. And did you observe any injuries at that time? I did not. What did you ask Ms. Heard at that time, if anything? I don't have an independent recollection. Again, it's been so long. I, I don't remember specific questions. Okay. Now, let me just back up a little bit. Um, during the time period from when you left the elevator and uh, when Ms. Heard came onto the hallway, at any time, did the generic white male tell you that there had been an act of domestic violence? No, he did not. Did he tell you anything that made you think there may have, may have been an act of domestic violence? No, he did not. Did he tell you anything that made you believe that, that uh, a crime may have been committed? No, he did not. And during that time period, did you ask him um, what had happened or what was happening? Yes, I did ask him and he just refused to give me any information. Okay. Okay. So now fast forward to what we were talking about with respect to uh, you in the hallway with the generic white male Ms. Heard and the generic white male's girlfriend. Um, after you observed her and saw no sign of injury, what did you do next? I advised her that we would be conducting a protective sweep just to make sure that there was no one else in the house. And she agreed if her neighbor, the male, could accompany us with the protective sweep. Okay. Up until that point in time, uh, did you ask Ms. Heard what happened? Yes, I did. And what was her response? No response. She was uncooperative. And an officer sign at that time was Ms. Heard cooperative? Ms. Heard was uncooperative. Thank you. Um, and by uncooperative, does that mean that when you asked her a question, she wouldn't say a word? Did she say something that made you think she was not cooperating? She wouldn't say anything. But just to be clear, you would ask questions and she wouldn't say anything. Correct. Okay. And what did you do at that point? After the protective sweep, I asked her again if she wanted to talk to me, if anything happened. Again, I don't remember the specific questions that I asked her but I asked her questions to establish if there was some sort of crime, who was involved. And again, she wouldn't give me any information. I asked, I attempted to ask her friend, uh, the other woman in the room. I even asked the males to wait in the hallway so it could just be us women in there so we could talk privately. Maybe she felt more comfortable that way. Still, the denied that there was any crime they wouldn't answer any specific questions. 
So I wrote a business card. I advised her if she changed her mind that she could call us at any time and we would respond to help her out. So backing up a bit to the time you were in the hallway with the three of them and you testified that Ms. Heard was uncooperative um, and then you indicated you did a sweep. I want to start with from the point of time in the hallway where she was uncooperative trans transitioning to the sweep. How did that occur? Did you ask her if you could look at in the penthouses? How, how did this how did you go from standing in the hallway to conducting a sweep? I I don't recall. Now before you before you swept the penthouses, um, did you ask if you could enter the penthouses? Yes I did. Okay. And who and what was the response? I I can't remember if she gave me a response or nodded her head. I I can't remember. From what you observed or heard from Miss Heard, uh, you took it that she was permitting you to enter the penthouses and look around. Is that accurate? Correct. Okay. Um, was it more than one penthouse? There was yes, there was two. Okay. And this term sweep we've been using. Is that a technical police officer term? Yes. What do you mean by conducting a sweep? It's called a protective sweep and we do so to make sure that there's no other individuals that may be victims that are hurt inside of the location or suspects hiding, concealing themselves from officers uh, that would attack the victim after we left the location. So we go in to verify that any potential suspects are gone from the location for the victim safety. Thank you. And you conducted a protective sweep of two penthouses, correct? Correct. What was your understanding of who owned or lived in the first penthouse that you performed a protective sweep on? It was my understanding that Amber heard that it was her home. Again, the, okay. the gentleman directed us. That's why he came with us we wouldn't get lost. I, I see. And during your protective sweep during the first pen of the first penthouse, um, did anybody accompany you during the entire sweep? Yes, the male, the only male that was there besides my partner. Okay. And your partner conducted the sweep with you? Correct. Okay. And As to the protective sweep of the first penthouse, did you um, go into every room of the penthouse? To my knowledge, yes. And was your knowledge based on uh, the generic white male leading you around? Correct. Was it your understanding that uh, you, that your protective sweep um, included you looking in every room in the penthouse? Correct. During the protective sweep of the first penthouse, um, did you see anything that led you to believe that a crime had been committed? I did not. During the protective sweep of the first penthouse, did you hear anything that made you think a crime had been committed? I did not. During the first protective sweep, did you see anything that made you think that an act of domestic violence had occurred? I did not. During the protective sweep of the first penthouse, did you um, hear or see anything, I'm sorry, did you hear or see anything that made you believe an act of domestic violence had occurred? I did not. Okay. Upon your completion of the sweep, protective sweep of the first penthouse, up until that point in time, um, from you exiting the elevator up until that point in time, did you hear or see anything that made you believe that a crime had been committed? I did not. Up until that point in time, did you hear or see anything that made you think an act of domestic violence had occurred? I did not. Now, I want to ask you, you testified that um, you testified to you um, viewing Ms. 
is heard and not seeing any signs of injury. Did you view her again after that first viewing? During the interviews and throughout the entire investigation, I'm constantly scanning her and watching. So I, if I see any other observations that would indicate any injury or domestic violence. And did you see anything like that? I did not. And you didn't see, did you see anything like that during the entire, during the entire time period that you were on that call? And do you believe that you um, had enough time viewing Ms. Heard to determine whether or not uh, she had sustained any injury? Uh, yes, I do. And, you deter and did you determine that she sustained any injuries? I determined that she did not sustain any injuries. So other than the conversation you had with her in the hallway when you first got there, did you have any other conversations with Ms. Heard? I did. Inside of the inside of the lost or penthouse, sorry. Okay. Was that before or after the protective sweep sweep? I believe both before and after. I attempted. Okay. okay. How many conversations, separate conversations did you have with Ms. Hurd? I, I don't recall. Okay. There was at least the one in the hallway and there was one uh, before or after the protective sweep, correct? I'm sorry, I missed that answer. Correct. Okay. And during the second conversation you had with her after the one in the hallway, how close were you to her? The same two to five feet. She was right in front of me. Would you, were you close enough to get a good view uh, to determine whether or not she had any injuries? Yes, I was. Okay. And during that second conversation, did you determine whether or not she had any injuries? I determined that she did not have any injuries. Okay. At any point in time during the incident, during the date of the incident, uh, did she complain of any injuries? She did not. During the protective sweep of the penthouse, did you see anything in disarray? I did not. Okay. Now, you indicated, oh, let me ask you, did you do a protective sweep of the second penthouse? Yes, I did. Okay. Did uh, the generic white male accompany you, accompany you on that sweep as well? Yes, he did. What was your understanding of who owned or resided in that second penthouse? I had no idea. Okay. Um, did you, during that second protective sweep, did you walk through every room in that penthouse? From my understanding, yes, we did. Okay. And during that second protective sweep, did you see anything that you would say was in disarray? I did not. During that second protective sweep, did you see anything that made you believe there had been a crime committed? I did not. During that second protective sweep, did you hear anything that made you think a crime had been committed? I did not. During your protective sweep of the second penthouse, did you see anything that made you believe an act of domestic violence had occurred? I did not. During the protective sweep of the second second penthouse, did you hear or see anything that made you believe um, a crime had been committed? I did not. After you performed the second protective, I'm sorry, after you performed the protective sweep, sweep of the second penthouse, what did you do? I re-responded to where Amber Heard was. And I again tried to see if I could get any information from her. I was unsuccessful. And then I issued her the business card and let her know that she could call us back if she wanted to talk. Did she answer any of your questions? No, she did not. At any point in time during the entirety of the incident, did Ms. Heard answer any of your questions? No, she did not. 
during the entire time of the incident did Ms. Hurd complain of any injury? No, she did not. During the entirety of your time at the incident, did anybody say anything that made you believe a crime had been committed? No, they did not. During the entirety of the time you were at the incident, did anybody say anything that made you believe an act of, an act of domestic violence had occurred? No, they did not. Okay. During the entirety of your time at the incident, did you see anything that made you believe a crime had occurred? I did not. During the, during the entirety of your time at the incident, did you hear anything that made you believe a crime had been committed? I did not. During the entirety of your time at the incident, did you hear or see anything that made you believe an act of, an act of domestic violence had occurred? I did not. Had you heard of anybody by the name of Ms. Hurd at that time? Never. Amber Hurd? No, I have never heard of Amber Hurd before that time. Okay. Did you recognize any of the people that you encountered during the incident? I did not. At the time of the incident, did you have any reason to believe that anybody you encountered at the incident was famous? I did not. Okay. And during the entire time that you were at the penthouses during the incident, did you have any reason to believe that Mr. Depp was affiliated or involved in the incident? I did not. Madam Reporter, can you repeat my last question? I lost where I was. Question. During the entire time you were at the penthouses during the incident, did you witness any bruises on Ms. Hurd? And there was not a response. I did not observe any injuries on Ms. Hurd. Okay. Did you observe any swelling on Ms. Hurd's face? I did not. Did you observe anything that led you to believe that she was a victim of domestic violence? I did not. Alex, if you can pull up Exhibit 2. So is this going to be Exhibit 57? Yes. 